What's up guys, Winter Kills here. We're back with another post commentary feature mat from Locals. Uh, this is round one, I think, and it's uh, me on the left there playing Mermails and uh, a friend of mine playing Dark, Hero, Ariadne, Pepe on the right is actually the same person that you saw play against OCG DDDs in the last feature match that I uploaded. If I haven't uploaded anything Yu-Gi-Oh related in between then. So yeah, as you can tell, it's a pretty short match, and uh, it's going to be a pretty one-sided match, and you'll you'll see that here in a moment. So you can activate Draco face-off going first. I figured, you know, he could get a special summon off this if he really needs it, so I might as well chain Maxi anyways, and then if I get a free draw, I get a free draw. Uh, so I'm going to give him the vector. It was going to be the one that I called even and roll the two to get the vector. He's going to put it in his scale. Obviously, he doesn't want me to get that draw off that Maxi. And he's got Master and Wavering Eyes, so pretty decent first turn. He can uh, definitely go grab a Skulk Red Joker Monkey Board uh, to get him basically a full set of scales, plus an extra monster on board uh, for more plays. But if he wants to go through with the field that he wants to make, uh, with all the cards that he has in his extra deck currently, if he wants to go complete his scales, I'm going to be able to draw a whole lot of cards. Um, off that max C. So I'm going to force him into a position where there's actually uh, very little he can do and he's just going to end up leaving his field, you know, untouched. He's not really going to go too deep as a, you know, doesn't want to really risk the max C challenge, uh, which is understanding. Sometimes it's very uh, hard to differentiate when you should go in under max C or when you shouldn't. I even have a hard time, uh, you know, understanding and deciding when it's the most uh, key moment to to go in under maxi uh, I a usual like uh, rule of thumb I have is if I know the deck doesn't play any sort of battle fader type esque things um, then it's usually just feel free to go in uh, which this deck doesn't really play any at the moment it used to play damage juggler um, so there's no real worry there but he does lizard draw gets free draw and he's just gonna leave his field as is he could go into ignis or he could go into nightmare uh which had been a strong play leaving himself with only part naga raigeki and summoner monk in hand and that raigeki will come down on my side of the field getting rid of all that advantage and i'll normal summon a little old marksman marksman is going to help net a lot of advantage let me special summon level 4 lower Atlantean uh, Sea Serpent Monster, I believe, for my deck. And I'm going to go grab Neptibus. Neptibus will swing in for an extra 800 damage. Then main phase 2, I'm going to get that effect off. I figured I could go for Dragoons, but I'd rather have Neptibus since Neptibus uh, is a little less damage, 1,000 less damage. But I can at least get a search off Dragoons, grab a Megalo, uh, make more plays happen. You know, help better my situation to take advantage of the situation um, that my opponent is in. A lot of times when I'm playing, if you know, if I'm playing against Pepe or a deck that's really good, whatever it be, um, you've always want to take advantage of a moment where your opponent's in a, you know, in between a rock and a hard place. Um, but a thing that usually happens with me a lot is, uh, is I can never fully make a really good follow-up play and it's just one of the most aggravating things maybe some of you can relate to when you like your opponent opens up horrible and they're like yeah you probably got this and then you you bricked as well and then you just lose because of that because they top deck something um yeah so that savage marks infantry is going to pop his monkey board i know this play that just happened right here with the soul charge he had no monsters in his grave that technically shouldn't work at least i don't think it should uh that's a mistake on my behalf uh as i didn't catch that so I'm fully aware of what just happened there you don't need to yell at me in the comments I understand um, so yeah the Raigeki should have gotten negated instead of soul charge as far as I'm concerned he could not legally activate soul charge there so uh, that technically shouldn't happen but it's good in this position that this happened because there's actually absolutely nothing he can do as a follow-up to that that would cause it to hinder my game state and the winning game state that I'm in. So he's just going to pass. 
And I've got another marksman for him. Marksman's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna grab me another Neptibus. Swinging for that extra 800. He's already down 28, 16. Down a lot of damage. Just off Marksman alone. There's that other Neptibus pretty much in the same position. And it's not looking too hot for him. So there's the Dragoons. Dragoons is gonna add. I think I had uh, Diva. I think. I think I had Diva off of Dragoons, and I think I had a Marksman off of uh, Neptibus. Just to kind of set up for some really awesome plays for next turn. If there is a next turn, you know, need be. And I believe I still have a set warning there and a Valor in hand. He draws Ultimate Providence as part of his Ariadne engine, and we just go game two because there's literally nothing he can do at this point. Uh, yeah, with a warning and Valor in hand, it's pretty much GG. So here we are in game two. After I take a pretty easy victory uh, with little to no effort. Game two, uh, I'm gonna be going second, I believe. He's gonna opt to go first. He's got Wavering Eyes, Mass Change, a couple of scales in hand. There's the Turn Toad and Sorcerer. He's gonna go give those up with the Wavering Eyes, and he's gonna go grab Skullcrabat Joker, looking to get you know, the best set of scales you can get in the deck at the moment, in my opinion, which is Monkey Boar, Lizard Draw, that one of Lizard Draw, but I've got the Valor to stop his Joker dead in its tracks. No searches for him, pretty much ending the plays that he has right then and there. Not really too, yeah, this is no follow-up after that. Um, that's why I think Valor is very, very good card, at least for going second. Um, definitely a card you either want to side in if you're going to go second or just have it in the main board if you're, you're a deck that really wants to go second. And that was kind of the philosophy I went with tonight, or not, I shouldn't say this night, but the night of the locals, I just kind of like, you know what, I'm always going to try to go second, get the most value out of my hand traps, and just try to OTK as much as possible as you should if you're playing Mermails or Atlanteans, what have you. Uh, definitely a good philosophy to have. Uh... I don't think going first is the greatest uh, if you're looking to make more defensive plays or you know it's really only a good first turn if you can make Moolin or Trish and make them start with a little few le little less cards than they should be starting with so I'm just gonna basically just get rid of his Joker with that mar that infantry uh, and get that Megalo on board with that spell negation coming in clutch He's got Partnaga and Luster Pendulum, the one of Luster in his hand. I think he's going to end up passing there anyways. Realizing, again, there's nothing he can really do with that hand. I believe they're both uh, low scales, and there's one for one. I'm just going to get rid of the Mulan in my hand. To go grab Nebdibus and make more plays. And the Salvage as well. Salvage is going to come in very clutch uh, and, and can, in the continuation of that play. So that, there you have it guys, Atlanteans will take the match against Dark Hero Guiding Ariadne Pepe, we'll just call it Dark Pepe for now, just to make everybody's lives a little easier. Um, so yeah, very interesting build of Pepe, uh, and I will be doing an updated Atlantean profile very, very soon, I'll probably record it right after this, and get that up to you guys as soon as possible, because I was low on feature matches this week. Uh, strictly because my SD card was being weird and was saying there was no space on it left and when there was like nothing on the SD card itself and I fixed that so I should be trying to get more Yu-Gi-Oh content up to you guys very soon and that deck profile being one of them so yeah thank you so much for watching leave a like if you enjoyed or don't you know that's fine not everybody has to leave a like uh, if you got anything to say suggestions thoughts uh, leave them down in the comment section below and uh, don't get to subscribe if you are new to the channel. The support is greatly appreciated. Welcome all the new subs. Just hit 1,300 subs not too long ago. Again, a big thank you to you guys for that. Couldn't be here without you guys. Really means a lot. As always, Winterkill signing out. We'll see you in the next video, guys.